Welcome back, book nerds. Today I'm interviewing author Meg Gardner about her latest thriller mystery title, Into the Black Nowhere. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this week's book chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Every week we get bookish with roundtable book discussions, five-minute shelf bites, interviews, and more. Subscribe on your podcatcher of choice so that you don't miss out on any of this book nerd awesomeness. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com or call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction. The links for everything related to today's episode, including Meg's social media links, are below in the show notes. If you know someone that may enjoy this episode, please share it with them today. Before we get started, let me tell you a bit about today's interview guest. Meg Gartner is the award-winning author of 14 novels. Her thrillers have been bestsellers in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and Asia and have been translated into more than 20 languages. Her novel, China Lake, won the 2009 Edgar Award for the Best Paperback Original. The Nightmare Thief won a 2012 Audio Award for Thriller Suspense Audiobook of the Year. Unsub won the 2018 Barry Award for Best Thriller. Before becoming a novelist, Gartner practiced law in Los Angeles and taught the writing program at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Currently, she teaches for Texas Writers, a nonprofit program that brings accomplished authors to rural libraries for free public workshops. She's the 2019 president of Mystery Writers of America, a three-time Jeopardy champion, and a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation. I had a wonderful time chatting with Meg Gartner, and I know you'll enjoy this episode. So without further ado, let's jump into the interview. Hi, Meg. Welcome. Thank you for coming on today. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm super excited to talk to you about your series. But first, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, Would you share with us what books you are reading right now? I am just starting The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It's a retelling of uh, part of the the Iliad, the Greek myth. And I've read another one of her books, uh, Circe, which is also a retelling of Greek myth and a just wonderful, beautiful, exciting. It's, you know, she makes stories that are thousands of years old into thrillers, essentially. So I love them. And I'm going on a trip. So I've also got packed in my carry on uh, The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison, which is the third book in her science fiction trilogy, which I just adore. So hopefully that'll keep me happy for the next few days. Oh, awesome. I have that trilogy has been on my TBR for some time. And I've heard so many good things about it. Yeah, get to it as soon as you can. Okay. Uh, so do you have a goal to author that you will auto buy like new books for without even reading the description? Several, of course. I will always buy the latest Lee Child Reacher book. I always bought Sue Grafton's um, Kinsey Milhome Alphabet Mysteries as soon as they came out. These are authors that I try not even to read the jacket copy because I don't want to get even the slightest hint of what might be guiding my reaction to the story. I just want to experience it as if I'm one of the characters in the book. So those are always, um, have always been my go-tos. I'm sure I could spend the next hour mentioning more, but I'll stick with those. Uh, Do you have any authors or books that you think may have influenced your writing style? Style, of course, just because reading these authors has shown me that you can be yourself and speak with your own voice and not to be afraid. Don't tone it down. Um, just really go for it. Everybody from Elmore Leonard, who wrote uh, crime novels that were set everywhere from Michigan to Kentucky to Florida. He wrote Get Shorty, and not a lot of his uh, books were made into movies. James Lee Burke, who writes largely about Louisiana, uh, and also about Montana. Carl Hyacin, who writes, I guess you'd call them crime stories, but they're really social satires. And I just thought if you can put a monkey and the insane former governor of Florida in an airboat in the Everglades kidnapping some guy and turn that into a 
into a thriller, <laughs> then you can do anything as long as you've got the guts to do it. So I said, okay, this is what I want to do. That could be a, yeah, I could see that's a thriller. Uh, yeah, the, the governor of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Why not? Okay, so, <laughs> why not, right? So let's talk a little bit about uh, your series, the Unsub series. What like kind of motivated you to write this series specifically? I generally start my books with a crime. A real crime, <laughs> the, you know, or the, you know, the story has to be based on a crime because it's usually about the investigation of a crime. And Unsub, the first book in the series, came to me uh, because I grew up in Southern California and saw a police sketch drawing of the Zodiac in the newspaper, and it scared the hell out of me. I mean, it was this, mm. it was a supposed sketch of this guy, but all it was was a man with a black executioner's hood with these bizarre symbols on the front and a gun. And I looked at my dad and I said, well, who's that? And he, I just remember the look on my dad's face trying to explain to me what a serial killer was, much less mm -hmm. the Zodiac. And, you know, that kind of stuck with me all, you know, for years, wondering if my window was locked tight enough. Uh, the Zodiac had gone away, seemingly. Nobody ever caught him. He is what they call an unsub, an unknown subject, which is what the FBI calls uh, the bad guys that they don't have a, a name for, they're trying to identify and capture. And I thought, okay, he went away. What's to stop him from coming back and starting all over again? So that was the premise in Unsub, uh, the first book that features Caitlin Hendricks, where a cold case turns extremely hot when a notorious serial killer starts going back at it in the Bay Area, and she is sucked into the case that her father, who was a homicide detective, couldn't solve. And in the, the second book, Into the Black Nowhere, Caitlin has been recruited to the FBI, to its behavioral analysis unit. And she is working to track serial predators, essentially, and it comes up against a very devious, cunning, charming uh, killer who's uh, causing people to disappear in Central Texas. Oh, wow. So uh, since the second book is not tied to the Zodiac Killer, um, would it be safe to say that someone could pick up the second book and start there? Oh, absolutely. It stands on its own. Uh, I'd be delighted for anybody to pick it up. It's about an investigation into uh, uh, these series of disappearances that turn into killings and take Caitlin and her team across Texas and the Southwest up to the Northwest United States. It's uh, perfectly fine to start with that. It does have its own, I would say, grain of true crime history in it as well. It's not based on the Zodiac, but it is. I did get the idea from reading about Ted Bundy. I, I never want to say a book about something so dark could be inspired by a killer, but reading about him and how people seem to think he was so charming and successful mm -hmm. and such a nice guy. And maybe he had a future in politics. He was going to law school. He was the kind of man that maybe a lot of parents would have been happy to have, uh, you know, their daughter bring home to dinner. He just had this hobby that he uh, yeah. did. You know, he tended to murder college students and hitchhikers. And I was just fascinated and horrified by how he got away with it for so long what they how he pulled the wool over everybody's eyes you know wearing what what the psychiatrist called the mask of sanity um wow, it, yeah so that's what the story is it's how caitlin is going to strip the mask off a killer who's uh, similarly charming and manipulative and so good at reading other people that he gets under her skin and figures out how to push her buttons too so it's it's serious, but it's supposed to be. I mean, it's supposed to be a, a cat and mouse thriller. It's supposed to pull you along and to to figure out how she is and her team are going to hunt this guy down. So when you were doing research for this, I know you mentioned the Ted Bundy um, book. Did you check out any other you know types of information like a maybe true crime podcast or? I do listen to a true crime podcast since Caitlin has. Uh, it's now in the FBI. 
I, I listened to uh, the FBI retired files case review by uh, Jerry Williams, who is a former special agent. And uh, she has all kinds of people on her show who have done these jobs over the course of the, you know, the past few decades. And it's just fascinating to listen to their stories, uh, their careers, especially a lot of the, the female agents and what they got themselves um, into as, as part of this job. I went to a couple of seminars that the FBI gave for writers at their New York field office. And, um, you know, you find out what, what the real agents are working on and they give you presentations and, and you find out about counterintelligence and counterterrorism and organized crime and, uh, you know, behavioral analysis and all that. And that was absolutely fascinating. I think that's so interesting. Honestly, um, you mentioned that podcast. Have you ever listened to Real Crime Profile? I haven't. It's another podcast with a retired FBI agent. Real crime profile. I am. Yeah. Have become a total real true crime podcast maniac. So this is good. (laughs) Thank you. I'm writing it down. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Awesome. Because I think that's so cool. Like to like, and I know it's weird to say it's cool, but like to delve into, you know, the mind of somebody like that and to get into profiling, which is especially, I think, why. This book, uh, Into the Black Nowhere, kind of drew me because it's about a profiler, FBI profiler. And I think that is so interesting. And knowing you delved into that, I think will probably make Caitlin more believable as a profiler. Well, thank you. I hope so. I also talked to uh, several psychiatrists who and, and asked them, what is it about serial killers, first of all, that it fascinates us as what I presume are what we would call, you know, ordinary people why are we so fascinated yeah. by by these criminals and and how do their minds work and all that so it's i think we're we're, we're we are we are just intrigued by by people who do these things and part of it is part of it is curiosity and part of it is an instinct for self-preservation i think we feel like if we could figure them out then we can protect ourselves our families our friends whatever um Maybe that's why I like to write about it, too, because, of course, in a novel, um, Caitlin is trying not to become obsessed with these people. Uh, You know, she's a relentless hunter and she thrives on it. But, uh, you know, she feels she tends to take too much weight on her own shoulders to try to be the one who puts things right. (laughs) And and that's a lot of weight for her to carry. But uh, Mm -hmm. she, she mostly has fun doing it. So let's talk a little more about Caitlin. So obviously she's had some trauma due to her family and her past. Um, how is she like real time, like with her team and stuff? Is she like someone that's really troubled and she's got a lot of issues or she kind of got it together? You know, she's an alpha woman. <laughs> she's got it together. She's she's the alpha pup in the unit because she's the youngest one there. You know, she's the brand new agent. But, you know, she's there. They're, they all think that they're, you know, alpha females and males, but she would never regard herself as having more troubles than most other people in in life. I think that makes her pretty empathetic. You know, she grew up, her parents divorced because her father uh, let his, his work get the better of him. And that's something that can occasionally really happen to investigators. You know, these, you know, a cop or an FBI agent or a, a medical examiner, they see the worst that society, you know, that people do to each other in society, and they take on the responsibility of trying to put these killers away. And sometimes they get PTSD. And if, especially if there's cases they can't solve, it just grinds on them. So that's what happened to Caitlin's father. He had a, he had a terrible time. Uh, she now worries that maybe she's too like him. I think that's, that's where her that's where her issues are. But she thinks if she just works, she can work her way through it. What do you like best about Caitlin? She can run faster and jump higher than I can. <laughs> She's smarter. <laughs> That's good when you're chasing a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. She's, uh, she is, she is relentless, but she is relentless in a focused way. She is, disciplined and and knows what she doesn't know knows what she still needs to learn and wants to master the whole 
field of behavioral analysis investigation so that she can be, uh, you know, a real expert, not just a, you know, like not a preening alpha female, but somebody who really, really can get in there and make a difference in cases that other departments or agencies are having, having trouble solving. So her, her relentlessness, I think I really enjoy about her. Okay, awesome. So let's talk about, you know, the team that Caitlin works with. Are there any other, um, I guess, lead characters that Caitlin works with a lot that we would be interested in delving into? Yeah, there's in in real life. And so kind of in the book as well. uh, This unit in the FBI, they they work in about an eight person unit. So there's a a lead agent, you know, the, uh, the bureau, the bureau chief, the, the, the unit chief, excuse me, for uh, for her group, and that is C.J. Emmerich, who is a very experienced FBI agent, a legendary profiler, and he's officially her mentor, which is really the way the FBI does it with um, agents who come into this unit. He he takes her through everything to make sure she learns all about you know investigative technique, behavioral analysis, and so forth. There's uh, another female agent who she is. Um, she looks up to, admires, and is slightly scared of at the very start of the book, I would actually say. Um, Brienne Rainey, who is uh, already a veteran agent, um, extremely confident, knows how to own a crime scene when she walks onto the scene. Um, she's a mother of twins. She's um, one of uh, still a fairly rare number of African-American female agents in the Bureau, but uh, they are there. And Caitlin really looks up to her in, in, a, in a, her own special way as, you know, here's a, here's a woman who can show her how to navigate um, the unit, the, the, the job, Washington, D.C., et cetera. They, they have a technical analyst, which is also someone who the uh, – who the, the Bureau really uses, who's not, who's not a sworn agent, doesn't go out on, you know, put on a ballistic vest and strap on a gun and go out on raids and serve, you know, try to arrest people. But they have specialties. The Nicholas Keys is a technical analyst. So, um, and there's all the computer simulations, uh, IT, uh, tracking anything that you can track electronically. That's, uh, that's his purview. And he's kind of a, a young, fun guy. So Caitlin, Caitlin's learning how to work with him as well. And I, I enjoyed writing about all these people. I mean, to me, they're all very real, of course. So, um, I'm glad that they have more cases together. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a really unique team. Um, that's the best part about reading about teams like that because they have such strong bonds with each other and developing relationships. It's always fun to read that. Yeah. Rainy, Caitlin's, uh, Caitlin's colleague keeps trying to get her to, uh, to like, she, she thinks Caitlin needs to expand her cultural understanding of various things like opera and watching black mirror. So she's always getting, <laughs> trying to get her to do both of those. Does Caitlin have any other relationship things outside of the team or is it kind of just about, you know, the case and her, her people that she works with? She has, um, she has a boyfriend, Sean Rollins, who is an ATF explosive specialist. And he's also in the first book, Unsub. And he lives in the Bay Area, which is where Caitlin came from. So in, in the Black Nowhere, they're dealing with a long distance relationship and trying to find any weekend or even a chance like to, to see each other in passing practically uh, at an airport. Uh, but he's a, he's a good guy. He's her sounding board. He um, doesn't let her get away with anything. He calls her on her BS and um, mm-hmm. they, they have a lot of fun together. So, so there's that. She also has a dog shadow. So Shadow keeps her keeps her busy, keeps her running. Oh, nice. Okay, so you may not know this, but I love a good audio book. And I see that this series is available in audio and it's narrated by Hilary Huber. Did you have any um, say in picking her or how did that work for you? Yeah, Penguin Audio, um, you know, we recorded it, prepared the audio book and they sent me uh, a suggestions for, for narrators and I listened to some of Hillary Huber's other audiobook work and I was just so impressed and felt like she I could hear her being the voice of Caitlin and you know carrying through into the other characters as well but she sounded like someone who 
um, could embody the character really, really well. So I was delighted that uh, I said, I said, I would love to have her do this. And she did. Wonderful. I heard the little sample and I'm like, Ooh, this sounds good. I can't wait to get into it. Um, so I also heard, and I know this is a little bit of old information, but I heard that your series was picked up by CBS. Is that still in the works? Something is in the works. It's not on television yet, but there is news coming soon. And I hope I'll be able to tell everybody um, who knows by the time that the, the podcast is, is on the air. But yeah, I was absolutely thrilled that uh, the Unsub series was option for television. And I am excited to see what comes of it. Ooh, are you going to get to work with them on adaptation in that process? Some. <laughs> I'm not going to take it over. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be like on the set throwing things at people or telling them how to pout or, or jump or whatever, but some, yeah, on the, on the back end. So, so it's, it's different and it's fun. That's so exciting. I mean, I love adaptations. There's so many of them, you know, nowadays. It's like anything that's good on TV or that's a movie, it's an adaptation from a book, guaranteed. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about in regards to Into the Black Nowhere? No, just in general. I mean, it's, it's fast paced. It has, uh, I mean, it's a psychological thriller. So it does, you know, lead you through the, uh, the minds of, uh, the, of the, the, the criminal, uh, figuring out what he's doing, why he's doing it, how to, how to get ahead of him. And since, uh, so like I said, it is cat and mouse because he's, he's not done. You've got to have a smart villain to, um, so to make a worthy opponent for, uh, for your heroine. And I would just hope readers would know that I think it's a really good read, <laughs> honestly, that I hope they would really enjoy it. That there's some serious stuff in it, but it really is all about the story about how Caitlin and her team try to bring this guy to justice. Okay. is What can your readers look forward to next? Is book three coming soon this year? Yes. Unsub three will be out um, toward the end of the year. It's called The Dark Corners of the Night. And soon there will be more information about that on my website. All right. So we are going to move on to the lightning round before we end for the day. Are you ready for that? Let's hope so. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about it in case you don't know. So it's 60 seconds and you just answer as many questions as you can, you know, rapid fire style. Some are book related, some are not. Uh, some are open ended questions and others require you to pick one or the other. The one and only rule is that on those questions, you must choose. You can't <laughs> say neither and you can't say both. <laughs> okay. Yes, you have to pick. All right. <laughs> so. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let me hit my timer. Physical books or ebooks? Physical books. Hero or villain? Hero. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Bookstore or library? Bookstore. Android or Apple? Apple. Vodka or gin? Vodka. If you could pick one superpower, what would it be? flight cliffhanger or tied in a bow ending oh cliffhanger <laughs> windows or mac mac the beach or the mountain mountain what's your favorite food chocolate <laughs> early bird or night owl night owl audiobook or bookish podcast bookish podcast <laughs> <laughs> popcorn or chips chips Series or standalone books? Series. All right, and we're done. That was okay. so fast. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing that. I always have good fun listening to the answers personally. You know, you said hero or villain. I was almost, I, I, I knew it was lightning round, so I didn't want to explain, but I, I, for, I almost said villain, but then I realized, of course, the hero is always trying to overcome their own inner villain. So I thought that that would encompass both. Oh, that's a really good answer. I didn't think about it that way. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Oh, well, thank you for doing that. Um, so before we sign off, is there anything, uh, any last tidbits you'd like to share with the audience? 
I just thank everybody for reading and for listening. Thank you again for having me on. Um, if you want to find out anything more about my books, you can check out my website, meggardner.com, M-E-G-G-A-R-D-I-N-E-R.com. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter at meggardner1. And check me out. Awesome. It's been a pleasure, Meg. Thanks so much. Thank you. So be sure to follow Meg all over her social media and pick up a copy of Unsub and Into the Black Nowhere. The links for everything are below in the show notes. Thanks for tuning in today and I will catch you in the next book chat. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shop Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.